Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Telecom video, we're going to be focusing on Intel squarely in this video, because there is a lot of Intel news that's popped up, as usual, over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel's 7960X, which of course is an i9 processor on the X299 platform. We have results for it in terms of benchmarks but perhaps more crucially because these are engineering samples we actually have some early specifications which give us insight into cache and other bits and pieces then we're going to move over to the i7-8700K which is on the new mainstream coffee lake uh, architecture what's rather interesting about this of course is it's Intel's first foray into six cores for their mainstream platforms and then we're going to finalize the video with one of Intel's chief and perhaps most crucial engineer that Intel have had for around 20 years. And he has been instrumental in everything from Sandy Bridge and Kaby Lake all the way back to Conroe and Perrin. So we're going to be starting things out, as I said, with the X299 7960X. As I said, just to reiterate, the i9 7960X features 16 cores and, of course, 32 threads, thanks to hyper-threading. We'll go into the scores more in-depth in a moment, but I'll quickly give you the rundown. 5,238 for the single core, whereas the multi-core receives 33,672. Well, as I said, I'll go more into it in just a second, but let's quickly blast down the specifications. I've already revealed the uh, number of cores and threads, although that was public knowledge anyway. Now this is an engineering sample, and as such, the processor is being reported at 2.51 GHz. Now I'm going to assume there's nothing hinky going on here. In other words, Geekbench is not misreporting the clock speed, that it wasn't idle, that there wasn't like issues with the BIOS or whatever, and that's the genuine clock speed. Level 1 data cache and um, instruction cache are 32 kilobytes times 16, obviously per core. Level 2, as you would expect, is 1 megabyte. That's, of course, a new caching scheme because they redistributed all the cache. And finally, we see that they have 32 gigabytes of memories. Now, for those wondering, we can actually do a basic comparison with Geekbench, anyway, with the upcoming um, Threadripper 1950X CPU. Now, it too of course, has 16 cores, 32 threads, but they are running at a slightly higher clock speed with this engineering sample that's running at 3.4 gigahertz, but we still have Windows 10, we still have 32 gigabytes of RAM. The main thing here, however, is that the single core score is 4,074, the multi-core score is 26,768. Now, there is a couple of things to take into consideration. The first is that I highly doubt we're only going to see 2.5 gigahertz for Intel. It's much more likely that we're going to see around the 3 gigahertz mark. Now, before anyone jumps down my throat, yes, we are talking purely base clocks. One can easily add another 700 megahertz for turbo, but obviously turbo speeds are adding yet another layer of uncertainty when we're not even sure the base clock here, so I'm just going to keep things fairly simple. What that probably means is that with the X299 platform, we're going to see performance increase a little bit more for this processor, and for your FYI, I can imagine we're probably going to see very similar things occurring with uh, Threadripper as well. Unfortunately, we don't have Cinebench results or anything like that. The only Cinebench results we've actually seen of the Threadripper 1920X is from AMD, from their official YouTube channel, where it scored around 24,000 uh, Cinebench points, which is actually higher than their test results of the i9-7900. As a slight aside, those are actually under my own results when I've been benchmarking the um, exact same processor, the 7900X. I've got between 2330 and about 2350, depending on whether I just fresh booted the system. Do bear in mind as well that with AMD's tests in these particular set of results, well, there is a difference. You have the i9-7900X, which has, well, two fewer cores and four fewer threads than the Threadripper 1920X. So whether AMD are going to be able to compete purely in performance in all applications, I do feel they're going to win in some, it remains to be seen, but obviously you do have the price difference. So considering that there's around $600 US price difference between the um, Threadripper part versus the Intel part with the same number of CPU cores, one can make a very compelling argument that, well, 
at least in terms of value for the average user, I can certainly see a lot of people just wanting to jump on to the Fred Ripper lineup. Now we're going to switch to our friend Coffee Lake, which once again is the six core processor on the mainstream for Intel's upcoming platform. So a few days ago, I did tackle another rumor, well, piece of news actually. Uh, originally, the website videocards.com managed to grab hold of a CPU Z uh, image, which was doing rounds on a couple of other websites, but they were taken down, but not before videocards.com managed to grab it. And that revealed some information from an early engineering sample, including, but not limited to, of course, confirmation. We're seeing six cores, 12 threads, the amount of cache, the bus speed, the core clock of the engineering sample. I just want to point that out one more time. And of course, it's Coffee Lake with an 1151 socket. But another website, WCCF Tech, have managed to grab a, another image, which shows basically the full clock speeds of the process and a few other bits and pieces. So the base frequency is 3.7 gigahertz. And we're going to be looking at a boost clock of 4.3 for a single core. Dual core mode will be at 4.2 and hexacore at 4 gigahertz, which is not bad, once again, considering the sheer number of cores here. Obviously, I would advise caution of you just grabbing that processor if single core performance is like your thing. Um, you know, wait for tests and all that stuff to see how well it overclocks as well, especially if you don't need loads of processor cores and you prefer instead just a couple of cores with very high clock speeds. I know some people with certain games who like need really, really high refresh rates on their, on their system, maybe that would be imperative to you. But I think for the average user, you know, wider is better anyway. Unsurprisingly, the base clock is 100 megahertz which is not exactly shocking at all, as is not the number of uh, amount of cache, rather, 12 megabytes. Um, and we're looking here at, uh, once again, the inclusion of a graphics core with a minimum clock speed of just 350 megahertz. And it does appear to have 95 watt TDP and compatible LGA 1151, the problem is I'm not sure whether it's going to be backwardly compatible. There have been numerous reports that it is and numerous reports that it's not. What I mean by that is let's say you happen to have, I don't know, like a Skylake board. In other words, a 100 series board. Will you be able to do a BIOS update, for example, and then plonk one of these in? I don't know, because quite honestly, no one said anything. Manufacturers don't want to seem to commit. And I guess it really is just down to whether Intel and the manufacturers kind of want to play ball or if there's something inherently that just doesn't really work. Obviously, there would be some platform features you would miss as well if you had a 100 series board. And possibly if you had a 100 series board and it was like, you know, kind of getting old, especially if you did a lot of hardcore overclocking, maybe, maybe you could be kind of tempted to upgrade anyway. But of course, as usual, that is down to you. Anyway, I think that's about it on the Coffee Lake. I just want to finish off with one final thing, um, and that would be Intel and their loss of perhaps one of their most important engineers. Now, I'm probably going to butcher this poor individual's name, so I can only profusely apologize, my friends. But anyway, his name is Francois Ped Pedal? Pedal? Probably butchered that, as I said. And he has informed us via Twitter, out of all places. A lot of stuff seems to be Twitter via now, uh, Twitter now, doesn't it? In slightly broken English, this morning I am informed my management that I do not wish to continue my employment at Intel. New adventures coming, very exciting. In other words, he's saying that he's quitting of his own accord and he wants to move on to other things. Now, this chap is not just, you know, someone who happened to work at Intel and didn't really have an important job. He was very instrumental in a lot of different architectures. Katmai, Conroe, Perrin, uh, Nilham, uh, Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, Broadwell, uh, Skylake. You get the idea. He's been kind of busy. So, from what I understand, he also was very involved in the um, shift towards the architecture from Pentium 4. In other words, the network net net burst, excuse me, architecture to to core. And he's also developed things such as Intel's hyperthreading. He's well, no, he hasn't developed it solely. Let me let me recant that. He's been heavily involved in heavy in um, hyperthreading. 
So he's very he's a bit he's a big he, he's a big player in the industry. I don't think he's going to AMD. I I just don't. Um, according to the Twitter conversations, it doesn't look like he's going to AMD. My guess would be another big company like, for example, Samsung or whatever. And uh, it's quite funny actually because on one of the Twitter threads, he said something like uh, that darn Apple spell checker with a um, with a with a smiley face and. He said he would never be going to AMD because, well, his in- knowledge about Intel is just too deep. He would just get lawyers knocking his door. Uh, he he just basically wants to do something different, is what he's saying. So it's possible it could be Apple, maybe machine learning, maybe a new processor or something else. Who knows? But that's pretty cool. Um, I, I I wish him luck in his future endeavors. It sucks for Intel. Um, as you know on the channel, I'm not a fan of Intel. I'm not a fan of AMD. I'm not a fan of any company. I'm, well, I am technically, I guess. I'm a fan of all companies because I'm just a fan of tech. So whenever they produce something cool, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a happy kitty, basically. You know, I'm like, you know, running around essentially like a, a cat when it's like chasing a ball of yarn. That's basically me when new technology is released. That was like the worst analogy ever. So yeah, pretty much. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.